Bob turned out to be a very dominating performance against Southern Illinois on Saturday, but certainly started with a ton of adversity with three suspensions on the defensive side of the ball and then losing Chris Strebler in the first offensive series. I mean, it didn't seem like the kind of day that was going to go so well for you in the end. Well, you know, we uh, responded to some challenge, including challenge coming from um, a game where we had lost for the first time all year. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the uh, our guys uh, stepped up uh, that needed to step up. Uh, uh, you know, when uh, you lose uh, a player like uh, Chris Traveler, uh, you know, it's a tremendous momentum swing. And Austin Simmons came in and, and did a great job uh, directing our offense. And that certainly bodes to the confidence you have in, in Austin and, and, and the work that he's gotten done over the years. And, and he was very efficient when he was in there. He uh, he managed the game uh, very well. You know, with the halftime lead, uh, you know, our thought in the second half is uh, let's play the kind of football that uh, we need to, to to win the football game, which was continue to play great defense, uh, make sure that we don't make mistakes offensively, and and uh, even though uh, the statistics look skewed uh, uh, from uh, uh, the fact that we had two defensive scores, I uh, thought uh, we did a good job uh, offensively in the opportunities that we had to, to control the football. And the quarterback's best friend, of course, is a great running game, and Mike Frederick and Kai Henry combining for nearly 170 yards. That's going to take a lot of pressure off Austin Simmons. Yeah, going into the game, um, you know, we, we really felt we needed to get back to reestablishing balance. Uh, the week before, we have had to throw the ball 63 times. That's not uh, um, what we do uh, offensively. So defensively, obviously, with two starters suspended, you needed guys to step up, and, and you got a tremendous effort from your defense in that game. Yeah, our defense uh, responded uh, to not playing very well uh, the week prior, um, and uh, uh, not only forced turnovers, but <clears throat> also played very consistently all day against uh, one of the better offenses in the league. And obviously, uh, Sam Straub getting hurt certainly dealt them a blow, and so you're dealing with a backup quarterback in there, but that's certainly no, you, you guys can't control that, and, and you played the best you could against what they were throwing out there. Yeah, it was a very uh, ironic situation when you know you have uh, two of the top quarterbacks in the uh, uh, in the league. So let's talk about the play of Andrew Gray and Mike Johnson and the guys. I mean, those pick sixes were huge and just indicative of a defense that forces five turnovers on the day. Yeah, defensive scores uh, are are big in college football, um, and to get two of them uh, in one game and and two of them in one half, uh, you know, really was a great way to kind of seal that uh, victory uh, last Saturday. All right, let's talk about Northern Iowa now. I mean, this is a team that Coach Farley always seems to have this group playing very, very well toward the end of the year, and you're catching them late in the year, and this is the time that they tend to be most dangerous. Yeah, their staff, uh, uh, their staff does a great job. Uh, uh, you know, you always uh, judge a football team by how well they're playing at the end of the year, and, and they're certainly a team that's playing at a very high level, They've played a very difficult schedule. Uh, and uh, have some really good wins, a uh, team with great personnel, a team that will certainly be a tremendous challenge for us on the road uh, this week. When do you make a decision about the status of Chris Trevler? Well, Chris practiced uh, yesterday okay. fully. Uh, he is uh, you know, improving and, and uh, definitely feel like he, we will be available to play on Saturday. This Northern Iowa team is about a two-thirds uh, pass and run, but when they have run the ball effectively, that's when they've had their most success. They've been over 100 uh, yards on the ground four times, over 200 yards at South Dakota State, and so you can't just assume they're going to throw the ball a lot. They, they have the ability to run the ball well. I think, uh, you know, as you look at uh, uh, the second uh, half of their season to date, uh, that's been the big change offensively is their ability to to run the football and be better balanced offensively. And, and so any defensive plan uh, that we have will have to stop or start first and foremost with uh, uh, trying to contain that running game. And then Eli Dunn has been very, very efficient at quarterback, 61% completion rate and, and 19 touchdown passes. And then Doris Fountain, his wide receiver, I mean, that's a pretty good combination. Yeah, great combination. Um, you know, one of the, the best wide receivers in the league and, and a quarterback who has now gained an experience over the last two years and is playing at a high level himself. The one thing they've done is they've given up a bunch of sacks, Bob. Do you, do you look at this as an opportunity to maybe get to the quarterback in this game? Well, that's one of the keys. Um, you know, we've we've done a good job from a defensive front standpoint putting pressure on quarterbacks, and 
And uh, if we can play the kind of defense that we've uh, been playing and put teams into uh, off-schedule situations, then uh, the ability to put pressure on the quarterback will be a key. And for your offensive line, obviously keeping track of Ricky Neal is going to be key because he leads the Missouri Valley in sacks right now. Yeah, their defensive front is as good as anybody in the league, and and uh, you know our our uh, young uh, offensive line group uh, has been up and down a little bit over the last two weeks. I thought we got better play uh, last week against Southern Illinois, and uh, we're going to have to elevate another notch this week against Northern Iowa. How about that linebacking core? I mean, you got Jared Farley, who has been such a good player for such a long time in this league, and now you got Duncan Furch as well. I mean, that that really is the strength of that defense. It seems like. Well, the front seven, without question, um, you know, and and uh, you know, Coach Farley's had a tremendous recruiting advantage over there, having uh, two sons that yeah. have been outstanding linebackers uh, in the league, and and uh, not just, uh, you know, I'm sure they've been great leaders for their program as well, and so, you know, we're going to have to block well in the in the front, uh, um, and uh, you know, try to maintain some consistency and balance offensively. And, Bob, like you've said before, momentum, confidence, so important. And to see your club get that momentum and get that confidence back after losing the week before had to be something I'm sure you were curious to see how these guys would respond. Yeah, you know, we're, we're a pretty young football team, and, and uh, you know, all, every opportunity that we have along the year is, is uh, you know, for some of them the, the first time. And, and to see guys respond to coming off of, a game at, at Illinois State uh, that was a very important game, but uh, we lost and, and play the kind of game that we did last week uh, is certainly something that we can build off as we move ahead into the final three weeks of the season.